Hezekiah's. No. Sometimes it starts up anyway, even though it tells me that it started. Hezekiah's sickness and recovery. Today we are actually reading Isaiah chapter 38. Then we're going to double dip a little bit and we're going to jump into Isaiah 39 as well because it's a nice short passage. Um, and uh, yeah, there's not a ton of reading in this part. So um, yeah, as I was looking at it, I'm like, let's do two. Um, but right now we're talking about Hezekiah. Um, and uh, what's been going on with him over the last couple of days is uh, the Assyrian king came over, well, his representative came over and started telling uh, all of the people in Hezekiah's kingdom, like, hey, this is what your God uh, has told us to do to come and destroy you. So if you just kind of give in to our demands, we'll give you some chariots and stuff like that, and then you will uh, be our possession and no longer your gods. Um, and then used a bunch of really fine words, twisting their history, appealing to their fears, appealing to their strengths, appealing to um, their faith and challenging their loyalty to God um, all along the way. And uh, the people, like he, he attacked their hearts, their spirits. He attacked so much of them. And then uh, they brought that to Hezekiah, and Hezekiah was given like choices: Do I go to Egypt, which God said not to do? Do I do this? Do I do that? Do I do this other thing? And instead, he went and he prayed, and God said, "Don't worry, just stick with me, and I'm going to send him back the way that he came." And in fact, when he gets back home, he's actually going to die. And Hezekiah though he had so many earthly reasons not to listen to God, he decided to go forth listening to God. And sure enough, um, there was another attack that I actually ended up bringing uh, word, word got brought to the Assyrian king and he had to turn around on the very road that he uh, came down in order to go back home. And then once he was home, uh, and everything was kind of dealt with there. His sons, two of his sons ended up stabbing him, killing him. And then one of his other sons ended up taking the throne. So that's a little bit about uh, kind of what was going on up to this point. And if you're feeling like, hey, uh, this story is kind of interesting, I want to know more, or kind of sounds familiar, it's also uh, been covered in Second Kings uh, starting in um, chapter 18. Uh, 2 Kings 18 is the other place that it's covered. But we're reading the accounts of the story from Isaiah chapter 38. If you don't have a physical Bible, I'd love to hook you up with one. Uh, load up the Bible Gateway app or the Bible app. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. I'm going to take another sip of coffee. And then we're going to jump into Isaiah chapter 38. Hezekiah's sickness and recovery. And then we'll pause and then uh, break down some stuff that might have jumped up from there and then go into 39. We good? We good. Let's go. Hezekiah's sickness and recovery. About that time, Hezekiah became deathly ill and the prophet Isaiah, son of Amos, went to visit him. He gave the king this message. This is what the Lord... Lord says, set your affairs in order, for you are going to die. You will not recover from this illness. When Hezekiah heard this, he turned his face to the wall and prayed to the Lord. Remember, O Lord, how I have always been faithful to you and how and, and have served you single-mindedly, always doing what pleases you. Then he broke down and whipped. And, and wept bitterly. Then this message came to Isaiah from the Lord. Go back to Hezekiah and tell him. This is what the Lord says. The God of your ancestors, David, says, I have heard your prayer and seen your tears. I will add 15 years to your life, and I will rescue you and this city from the king of Assyria. Yes, I will defend this city. 
And this is the sign from the Lord to prove that he will do as he promised. I will cause the sun's shadow to move ten steps backward on the sundial of Ahaz. So the shadow on the sundial moved backward ten steps. Hezekiah's Poem of Praise When King Hezekiah was well again, he wrote this poem. I said, In the prime of my life, must I now enter the place of the dead? Am I to be robbed of the rest of my years? I said, Never again will I see the Lord God while still in the land of the living. Never again will I see my friends or be with those who live in this world. My life has been blown away like a shepherd's tent in a storm. It has been cut short as when a weaver cuts cloth from a loom, suddenly my life was over. I waited patiently all night, but I was torn apart as though by lines. Suddenly my life was over. Delirious, I, charted like a, I, I chattered like a swallow or a crane, and then I moaned like a mourning dove. My eyes grew tired of looking to heaven for help. I am in trouble, Lord. Help me. But what could I say? For he himself sent this sickness. Now I will walk humbly throughout my years because of this anguish I have felt. Lord, your disciple is good, for it leads to life and health. You restore my health and allow me to live. Yes, this anguish was good for me. You have rescued me from death and forgiven all my sins for the dead cannot praise you they cannot raise their voices in praise those who go down to the grave can no longer hope in your faithfulness only the living can praise you as i do today each generation tells of your faithfulness to the next think of it the lord is all is ready to heal me I will sing his praise with instruments every day of my life in the temple of the Lord. Isaiah had said to Hezekiah's servants, Make an ointment from figs and spread it over the boil, and Hezekiah will recover. And Hezekiah had asked, What sign will prove that I will go to the temple of the Lord? Uh, may God add a blessing to the reading of Isaiah chapter 38. Uh, so yeah, we're going to pause there for a second. Um, and I remember a lot of this too from um, um, Second Kings. But yeah, we have, you know, this great victory and everything. Um, and we have one of the few good kings uh, in Israel. And he gets really sick and God's like, cool, I'm going to call you home. And Hezekiah says, please, not yet. I really, like, and just pleads with God uh, to save him. And God goes, cool. You know what? I'll give you 15 more years. Um, but he was on death's door, and he knew that death was going to come, and he was missing things, and he was fearing things. And as I was reading this, I'm like, does Hezekiah understand what heaven is? Is this a concept that it has wrapped around it in his head? It's something that Jesus kind of talks about, about our life in the next type deal, uh, and everlasting life with him. But is this something that was widely understood, at least by King Hezekiah? It is a question that I had that came out from that. Um, and one of the other things that this also reminds me of is there's a lot of things in life that um, it's really easy to miss. I didn't know. I, f I forgot what this chapter was going to be about. Uh, and I'm reading, I'm, I'm wearing this hat right now, which is overcome. And then there's, uh, I got to turn my head weird because uh, it's all reversed on the camera. This, uh, it means overcome suicide is kind of what this thing is. There's, you know, um, shorthand for suicide in uh, some 
online forums and communities and stuff. So it's like overcome suicide is the hat. And while I was reading this, um, I was reminded of this scene from the play Bang Bang You're Dead, um, which happens to be one of my favorite movies. Um, but there's a scene where this just thought about how heavy the scene is. Um, and he goes in, the, the, the main character goes in and he's contemplating whether or not to shoot up his class. And then he's kind of like tortured by the ghosts of his fellow students as they're remembering hanging out with friends, pizza, um, you know, um, being late for class, the feeling of butterflies in the stomach and, you know, getting yelled at and all those things that help make life so rich and that they were going to miss out on that. They, they didn't know that, you know, their last time getting grounded was the last time getting grounded or that the last time they were going to, you know, they asked out that girl that that was going to be the last girl that they'd ever uh, ask out and then like silly things too like you know like falling numb on the toilet and like these things that are just life and then re recontextualize within like that's not going to happen and this was taken away from them and those little aspects of life that actually make life so rich and in that play, there is that idea of, like, I'm going to kill all of them and then kill myself type deal, which it's very heavy subject matter. But as I'm reading through Hezekiah's kind of poem here, as he's contemplating his life, it brings me back to that. And there's something in here that really just really jumps it out. Um, and that's after he gets given that new lease of life. This sickness was good for me. And it was like, whoa. Yeah, that really hammered it home. In our life, while we're walking around on this earth, there will be trouble. But it's something that makes life so special too. This world that we're given and that we have, it's so easy to take the littlest things for granted. Hanging out with friends, being able to study God's word like this, to to discover it all over again, to be on the stream with me, to have these conversations, to ask these questions, to get these insights, to be able to do this. It's something that um, is special. Your life has meaning and value and it is special. And God sees that. And hopefully you don't have to go through something like Hezekiah did in order to get that that lease on life. And then the other day, um, I was reminiscing about how I got really sick. And I should have died, actually. Um, for the amount of time that I was sick, um, and the amount of days it took me to finally go to the hospital, I was around 40% of people don't make it that long so like I had a 60% chance of being dead by the time I made it to the hospital because I just waited to go um, and I had a, a, a little bit of a lease on life and another way to be like okay you know I can see these things in life that have value and have meaning and have purpose even though they're uncomfortable and they aren't the best um, you know but it's life and it's the life that God has given me you might be frustrated with where your life is. You might be comparing your life to someone else's and just be like, I want what they have. But you have been given this special gift to be in the family that you're in, to be in the situation that you're in, to be in the location that you're in. And yes, times might be tough. And we can lean on God to help us to get through those times. But your life has value. And God loves you and wants to completely redeem you and spend time with you. And yes, you know, things might be tough right now. 
But there is that promise of heaven that Hezekiah might not fully understand from this reading. But we have the whole Bible. We know what Jesus was talking about when we have that hope. That hope to be with God, to be with Jesus, to be with the Holy Spirit, to be with the Father in heaven. And that he is preparing a place for you, but heaven's not ready for you yet. The earth still needs you. And in Hezekiah's case, the earth still needed him an extra 15 years. Um, so yeah, uh, didn't plan it. Wasn't thinking about this hat. Wasn't thinking about that movie until we got into this. And I realized that a lot of what I, my reactions to this weren't even necessarily completely grounded in the Bible. It's just what the thoughts provoked me to think of is um, what the words provoked me to think about is the value of of your life the value of my life even the uncomfortable bits um so yeah big takeaway from this chapter is life has value even the uncomfortable bits uh and like Side note to that, Jesus came down and he had some of those uncomfortable bits. Jesus had to go to the bathroom. Jesus had to poop. Um, which I, kind of is one of those things that still blows your mind, but like Jesus was so human. He stepped down from heaven and then he had the uncomfortableness of needing to poop. <laughs> which sounds really juvenile, but it's so amazingly profound. There are human rulers today that try to convince their people that they are gods and that they don't have to go to the bathroom. Yet Jesus, a God, the God, steps down and gets so into all of our mess that he even has a properly working digestive system. And that is crazy. Like, God was willing to get that uncomfortable for us. In a time when they didn't have bidets, they didn't have toilet paper. They didn't have flushing toilets. Jesus came down and chose to be like, yeah, I'm going to live during that time. <sighs> Anyways, big point here. Life is worth leaving, living, even those uh, uncomfortable bits. And that Jesus has promised us heaven. So we can get through all of the junk here because we know that something so much greater is waiting for us over there. And not to rush that because even the uncomfortable bits, even the difficult bits are a gift here today. So that's the big takeaway from that part for me. But now we're going to move on to chapter 39 envoys from um, uh, Babylon. And, uh, yeah, let's jump into it. <clears throat> Soon after this, Merodash Baladan, son of Baladan, king of Babylon, sent Hezekiah his best wishes in, and a gift. He had heard that Hezekiah had been very sick and that he had recovered. Hezekiah was delighted with the Babylonian envoys that showed them um, and showed them everything uh, in his treasure house. The silver, the gold, the spices, and the aromatic oils. He also took them to see his armory and showed them everything in his royal treasures. treasuries. There was nothing in his palace or kingdom that Hezekiah did not show them. Then Isaiah the prophet went to King Hezekiah and asked him, What did those men want? Where were they from? Hezekiah replied, They came from a distant land of Babylon. What did they see in your palace? Isaiah asked. They saw everything, Hezekiah replied. I showed them everything I own, all my royal treasuries. Then Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Listen, this is a message from the Lord of Heaven's armies. The time is coming when everything in your palace, all the treasures stored up by your ancestors until now, will be carried off to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says the Lord. Some of your very own sons will be taken away into exile. They will become eunuchs. 
who will serve in the palace of the Babylonian king. Then Hezekiah said uh, to Isaiah, This message you have given me from God is good. For the king was thinking, At least there will be peace and security during my lifetime. May God add a blessing to the reading of Isaiah chapter 39. So, yeah. We know a little bit about Babylon now. Uh, we've heard a little bit about it during the extra readings after we read through Second Kings. And yeah, on the surface, I get how Hezekiah can see this as a good thing, right? How oh, cool. Well, the, there'll be peace. If this happens, these guys were so nice. They were so thoughtful. Then, you know, we're going to be able to bridge gaps. And he saw, it sounds like he saw this as unity between the two but really that's not babylon's idea babylon lie cheat steal and they are rich and you know there's that plot to hostily uh take over uh judah and israel and we know that's part of the plan but hezekiah he's in such good spirits he doesn't catch the warning and he doesn't see the danger and he goes well during my lifetime this is what's going to happen this is awesome and I'm just going to entrust it to the next generation to carry that on sounds like his thought process and like yeah he got that list that lease on life he knows he has 15 years left and he's just going like yeah this is a good thing like there's going to be peace and he misunderstood what God was saying it was a warning. And that warning he took to mean, hey, here's this awesome thing that's going to happen. And that's an interesting and also a bit of a, a, a thing to struggle with, right? Like, not all news is bad news. Some news that sounds bad is actually good. And some news that sounds good is actually bad. And that's where we need to lean on God for discernment. And, you know, I'm a fairly positive person, I think, for the most part. But that doesn't mean bad news can't happen. And how do we handle the bad news? Well, how do we, how do we take that? Um, and, you know, it's a struggle. Everything uh, can bring glory to God. And that's 100% true. But, you know... We can't be in such good spirits that we miss mornings. And we can't be in such bad spirits that we take gifts as insults and as poisons. To, to get these things and to think of them soberly. Um, it's a tough thing. We are very emotional people. Um, we bring a lot of baggage to every interaction and every time we get the news and stuff like that. So... Sometimes we need to rely on others to help us to understand a third party observer to help us to really wrap our heads around things sometimes. Um, we need to pray for discernment. Um, but yeah, um, I guess that's the big message there too is um, there's a lot of people as well um, that will pretend to be your friends in order to find out your weaknesses and backstab you, um, to manipulate you. There's a lot of people that are ready to try to weaponize your faith against you. Um, I feel like I'm fairly open uh, on my standstill and things and wanting to be unified even though there's some things that bug me but <laughs> some other things, but, um, you know, I... I Feel like I'm ever I'm fairly transparent. If you ever have any questions, comments, or concerns, please message me. Ask me some questions. I've even, especially on the YouTube channel, I've had uh, a couple decent back and forths with some people that have very different understandings on some of the scripture verses that we've talked about. Um, and that's good to have that diversity of understanding. I think is really important. Um, so with that though um, yeah to, to have discernment not just on the news that we get but on who we're sharing it with 
discernment on who is speaking into our lives, who we're sharing ourselves with. Um, since I, you know, I was talking about other media before, uh, this also reminds me of relationships. There's a great song from Andy Minio that says, be careful who you make memories with. Um, so from a relational standpoint, it's like, you know, don't start just dating anybody and everybody who, you know, shoots you a nice smile and, you know, take things too far. Be careful who you make those memories with. But also just kind of be careful with who speaks into your life, who you're willing to go on these grand adventure with and trust your life and your memory to. It's valuable. Um, yeah. Uh, so with all of that, let's pray. AJC, awesome. Jesus Christ, thank you for chapter 38 and 39 of Isaiah. I thank you for that reminder that life, even those tough times, have value. And that there is that promise of being in heaven with you. And that you are preparing a house for us. And I, Lord, I pray that you can help us to trust that to ha be farsighted and see those great things and to be able to give us the strength to withstand what's going on here today knowing that tomorrow in heaven will come but give us the strength to make it through today and the eyes to see the privilege of everything that we have today um, Lord help us to have discernment with who we share today with who we make memories with, who we entrust, and help us to not just approach everything with our preconceived notions, but to really think things soberly, hearing from you, Lord. But help us to be careful with who we make memories with. Help us to act justly, love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, Lord. And help to protect us from people that want to weaponize our faith, weaponize our culture, weaponize us to either make a buck or give themselves more power or whatever it is, Lord. Help give us discernment. Help us to be able to see the, th the truth and cut through all the noise and the manipulation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us and for helping us with all of these in your name, Lord. Amen. All right. Well, thank you guys very much. Even though we did uh, two chapters, we're actually bringing it in underneath uh, 30 minutes. So that's pretty awesome. Have a great day. God bless.